Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is CJ. I am the CTEP at Metro Cell. Uh, and this is uh, the, our Creative Media Toolkit. Uh, so sort of thinking back uh, to when we uh, first created the project, uh, the idea was to create kind of a, a little um, set of skills that uh, educators can present. Uh, either in a virtual setting or in a classroom. Um, the emphasis being on something that can be done remotely um, while still uh, being able to cultivate uh, uh, skills, uh, sorry, skills of involving uh, creative software. Uh, so we have a couple different um, focuses on in our toolkit. Um, we have a couple different uh, in introductory uh, lessons, uh, one involving audio and the other involving uh, visual components. We have a uh, little um, intro uh, lesson on storytelling and possible lesson planning involving uh, storytelling and a little bit of uh, uh, some aids involving uh, mental health resources just for uh, students who are struggling, possibly struggling, um, handle coping with, you know, various different situations. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it to our next slide. Hi, I'm Aileen. Uh, she, her pronouns, and I uh, serve at the Roseville Library for the Ramsey County Library System. And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our overview of the project. So CJ did a good introduction, kind of explaining we wanted to create some kind of resource. We ended up calling it a toolkit um, that would combine a focus on creativity, mental health, and some digital media skills that the group had and wanted to share. Um, so focus on making it accessible way to learn these skills, both in the software platforms and materials we used, as well as having it live um, online and be easily accessible that way. Um, and kind of compile knowledge that we had, we wanted to share with people and kind of going away from the traditional kind of technology instructions into the more creative side of things. Um, and then connecting it back to that learning a new skill and being creative is also uh, can be a boost to your mental health and kind of tying it all in together that way. And also talk, speak about some of the challenges we had with this project. Um, the first one and kind of the main one was having our ideas actually be something tangible and actually creating this toolkit. Um, we had different levels of familiarity with the skills we were trying to teach and different levels of familiarity with software. Um, and we really had to do a couple of different versions of our projects into making sure that they were actually beginner friendly um, and we weren't missing any steps. Um, going in and adding things like images to help explain things better was something we learned to do. Um, so yeah, that was kind of just the, the challenge of taking it from an idea to an actual uh, tangible thing. Um, another challenge we faced, probably many of these groups did too, comes with group projects is just coordinating schedules, um, being able to communicate, make sure everyone's on the same page and meet up regularly was a challenge, but it's fun we, you know, met and overcame. Um, and the last challenge we encountered was kind of towards the end of our project, and that was verbalizing exactly what our toolkit is and how it's useful to people, um, especially when they have different levels of digital literacy um, and maybe are unfamiliar with some of the skills we're trying to teach. And yeah, this is an overview of what exactly is in our toolkit. Um, each of us contributed kind of one main portion and we'll explain more in depth kind of each of our individual parts. Um, so starting off, I'm gonna keep going here and talk about my Choose Your Adventure game design project. Um, so this is something that I had done before and really kind of expanded upon through this project, which is to create a Choose Your Adventure interactive game using Google Slides, which was chosen because a lot of people already have Gmail accounts or familiarity with the Google Suite, um, and it's something that's free to access. Um, and so kind of some of the skills they're learning as far from actually learning how to use the Google Slides software is that it uses um, smart decision making, computational thinking, and the create to learn educational strategy, um, and then connecting it to the mental health component. Um, this project kind of explores decision making and how to make thoughtful decisions um, and that your decisions will lead you on paths and that you don't end up at a good or bad place. They're just different um, and that, you know, kind of exploring choices and can, you know, help calm some kind of anxieties about, you know, what's coming next for a lot of people. Um, so what actually was included, I had uh, ended up with five different materials. Uh, the first is some written instructions that can be 
printed out or presented that will go kind of through step by step of how to actually make the game. Um, along with that, I also created an instructional slideshow that an educator or presenter could show um, going again through step by step and giving a little bit of background on two drone adventure games and storytelling. Um, along with that, I also created two templates, a story flowchart template and a game slides template that if someone was a beginner and didn't want to create those materials from scratch, they could kind of fill in those templates with their story and images um, and not have to start from the beginning. And the last thing I created was an example game in case anyone um, was unfamiliar with this type of thing or choose adventure games in general, um, they could play through that. And it was also really helpful to then show off um, like what our project is and have a kind of finished example to present. Um, hi, I'm Shania. I serve at SPNN, she, her pronouns. Um, another element of our toolkit is an introduction to podcasting activity, which includes uh, background info about what podcasts are and what it takes to make one of your own with as little as a smartphone. Um, so podcasting as an art form has a lot in common with other forms of creative expression like music and writing and visual arts, which are proven to reduce stress and increase a sense of well-being. But there's also this added element of voice and using your own voice to speak loud, tell a story, and how that can um, affect you. So um, what's great about podcasting is how easily audio can be recorded and edited and uploaded. Um, all of it can be done with a recording device and Wi-Fi connection. So the activity in the toolkit is called a sound memory. Um, and it involves taking a story from your own life, recording the story, editing it to include music and sound effects. And um, the toolkit activity includes that, how you do that, different brainstorming techniques and games, editing. Um, so it allows you to do all that with um, at home and with as little as possible. Hey, hi all, um, my name is Alice. I use she or they pronouns and I serve at SPNN. And now I'll be presenting on my lesson for the toolkit, which was making GIFs. So GIFs are essentially short, soundless animations that loop repeatedly. And you might have seen them used on messaging apps or social media. And I was inspired by the way that GIFs are used to, uh, in place of text, to communicate emotions and feelings. So I thought it naturally lent itself well to this mental health activity toolkit. So these images are examples of slides in my lesson, which break down how to make a GIF through the app Jiffy. Um, Jiffy is a free online and mobile database that can also be used to make GIFs. So as with the other members' lessons, I try to make this process accessible for beginners. Included in my lesson are ideas for making GIFs that tie into mental health. Um, and here are some, just a list of some of those ideas. So uh, I'll just end my bit of the presentation by showing some examples of the GIFs that I made. So the ones on the right and bottom left are inspired by BTS's lyrics, which I think are always uplifting. And then the GIF on the top is a self portrait. And I think that succeeds in expressing an emotion that might be harder to convey in words. So yeah, in summary, I just wanted to make a lesson about um, helping youth express their emotions. And I thought that making GIFs would be a great way to do that. So now I'll pass the mic back to CJ. Okay, so sort of like, uh, as we've been alluding to throughout the presentation, um, mental health was a big component in terms of uh, kind of focusing in um, our project uh, was uh, kind of undertoned. Um, so we uh, have given uh, as kind of a bonus in our toolkit, a little uh, digital pamphlet that can also be printed uh if you wanted to hand out to students you could uh but there's uh some tips uh in terms of or just that will uh meant to encourage uh keeping track of your mental and physical well-being um here's some examples of those um as well as resources um uh for people who may um be struggling with certain things 
Uh, there's counseling resources, uh, resources if someone just needs to walk in, uh, just kind of talk things out. Uh, resources if someone's having a, a real crisis uh, in terms of uh, in various different situations, um, any problems with uh, housing or uh, possible uh, um, questions in terms of uh, relationships and things like that. Um, so that that is, this is our this is the pamphlet, and uh, it can be used uh, by educators. Uh, uh, just to give students resources. So we were able to present this at DigiDays, um, which was about a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had a lot of people stop by, um, a lot of people try out uh, Aliens game, um, which most people had uh, positive feedback on. Um, and I hope we're able to uh, take something away in terms of uh, creating a res uh, an educational resource. Um, and we're hoping that possibly CTEPs of the future will build upon this toolkit in the future. Um, it's currently living on the SPN website and will hopefully be there for a good, a good bit. So thank you for uh, listening to our presentation. Um, if, if anyone has any questions, I'll let Lizzie facilitate that. Excellent, yes. Give a round of applause to this group. Thank you for your presentation. Um, yes, if you have questions, please put them in the chat now and I will then moderate them for our group. My thought is that everyone just started to make gifts. They they, <laughs> they were so inspired. Um, I guess I'm curious, my question would be, you know, you landed on these four, but what else, um, was there something you explored and said this wouldn't be beginner friendly? Um, sorry, I saw a couple of questions pick up. Uh, yep, uh, I'll, I'll ask them. Okay. Um, we uh, were sort of, uh, sort of, um, we're trying to kind of uh, base it on level of digital literacy. So we kind of went off tools that people would have, we'd, we'd imagine would have uh, on hand um, if they are using um, some kind of device. So we didn't want to, we didn't want to try to go too far into things like uh, photography or, um, you know, more complex audio uh, recording just because um, some of that will require um, uh, additional um, resources outside of like a phone or a computer. So we kind of tried to focus in on kind of the more bare bones aspects um, of creative software. Um, but yeah, there's definitely more we can expand upon, um, I think in terms of just um, possibly video recording or um, maybe more, um, in terms of like maybe uh, uh, compiling like a lesson kind of through Zoom, um, um, if we wanted to do like a, a teaching kind of type skill. Okay, and then we have a question from Allison. Have you been able to test it with educators? Um, we have a we haven't uh, done anything formally yet, but I know uh, I believe next week uh, Shania uh, will be. Uh, doing um, a little camp about uh, podcasting and does intend to use our toolkit there. So we will um, have some uh, real uh, student feedback. Great. And then I think you're kind of answering this as well, but how do you, how do you administer these toolkits to participants? Um, we're trying to, uh, well, the, the SPNN uh, website is uh, where everything is housed right now. Um, but uh, we can, uh, we do have it all together um, on our own. So if we wanted to just send the toolkit uh, to an individual teacher, we could do that as well, or send a lesson to an individual, individual toolkit, 
teacher, we could do that as well. Um, but everything right now is say a house on the SPN website. So um, links for that will, will be um, expanded upon. Okay. And then lastly, um, Lisa says, I love the focus on the more fun or creative aspects of expression that this group, group took. I apologize if I missed it, but there was, sorry, but was there a specific target audience for these toolkits? Um, no, no, no one, I guess, in particular, uh, when we, when the project was kind of originally conceived, the idea was uh, to aim it more towards young adults. Um, but I think as we went through, we realized that it has um, uh, the possibility to um, just uh, for anyone who wants to uh, kind of learn a new skill or engage with their creative side. So no one really in particular. Okay. 